you're watching Invest Comics TV. And this is Rick Osmond for Invest Comics TV, and I'm here today with Alex Roderick. Am I saying that right? Yep. Hi, all. <laughs> good deal. Okay, we're off to a good start here. Alex, now I know that you've been blogging, writing articles, however you want to say it, for some time. And the title of your piece is, uh, well, Working Title. Is that right? Yep. Yes, it is. <laughs> and you came up with that as a working title in the beginning. Yeah, originally that, that was the idea. I was shooting around different names for the column, and I just wrote down on a piece of paper when I first started Working Title, and I just kind of liked it, and it just kind of stuck. So. Understood. There we are. So why don't you tell us a little bit about what working title is, and I know that you've got some other stuff going on too. We'll get to that in a minute. Well, working title, I start when I started writing for Comics Bulletin, I started writing reviews, and the, the, the review format as set up in the review section of the site, they're not extremely long. You know, you want your your fans to come in, out, read, it also focuses mainly on, on one shots. Every once in a while, we'll get a full trade review. Well, I thought it's kind of hard to really review a one shot that's part one of six because right. some issues just are just kind of there because they're what I call the necessary evil. And there, nothing really happens. It just It's a spewing of information, and those are deathly droll to review. <laughs> yeah. You know, and it's not that they're poorly written, it's just, uh, okay, uh, it's good, what happens? Not a lot, but a lot. A lot. Um, so what I decided to do was really sit down and take full story arcs, a full volume, a full series, and just look at that. So I, I kicked off with uh, uh, Cacophony, Kevin Smith's Cacophony, which, Kevin, if you're watching, that was painful, don't do that to me again. Um <laughs> Uh, and, uh, you know, we moved on from there, and, and when I did certain titles, such as The Wizard of Oz, I compared it to the novel, and, you know, things like that, and I, I wanted to provide something that really focuses on the writing of the stories and, and the characterization and how these things are paced, and kind of, you know, I, I leave out the art a lot because I can't draw for the life of me, so I'm not going to pretend that I can. <laughs> But I wanted more of an in-depth analysis of what was going on, how I felt it was helping or hindering the uh, the mythos of each of each little world. Sure. And I, like you, I, I do not feel I'm qualified to truly critique artists because I aren't an artist. But yeah. <laughs> no matter how much I try, you know, once in a while I get one that's almost passable, but usually it's just awful. But you've. You've also done some other stuff, sidebar stuff, that uh, like being raised in a brothel type stuff. Is that? <laughs> <laughs> that actually was uh, me tempting DC. Okay. I tend to do that a lot because I'm a huge, huge fan of the Joker. Right. And uh, DC for the 1800th time. Come on, let me write an origin, man. Let me write an origin. <laughs> we actually inter interviewed Jerry Robinson uh, about a month ago, and uh, I had asked him at the end of the at the end of the interview, you know, do you have any advice or warnings? Because one day I I intend to actually succeed at talking DC into letting me write an origin for the Joker. And uh, he said, actually, I'm working on one now. But he was game for the competition. So there you go. I have a Jerry Robinson endorsement, <laughs> which I think is a pretty damn good endorsement. It is. But we'll see, hopefully. So uh, I admire your creativity when you're talking about other people's creativity. Thank you. I, I read through several of them. Uh, ob obviously, I have some catching up to do. I can't honestly tell you that I've read every single thing you ever wrote because I haven't. But I've read a half a dozen or so, and I'm impressed. And I've got, to, I've got to say, you used the English language with a lot of, um, let's see, what would the right word be? Um, assertion. You assert yourself using the English language. You assert your opinions. And... 
And that's okay. I'm not shy. <laughs> okay, that's another way of saying the same thing. <laughs> yeah. And I uh you also said that you've you've gotten some feedback from some of your reviews. Um you care to Yeah. talk about that at all? I, and really there, if you, There's if, a There's a few people who won't talk to me. <laughs> um but like I like I told them, um I meant it. I, I won't put anything out there that I wouldn't say in front of them. And I try that when I do have a negative critique, it's it's not just, oh, that sucked. Because if there's something about a story that I read, and I'm like, this is just terrible. And I, I can't pinpoint it. I'm not sure what it is. I'll actually put it in, in the review and I'll go, you know, some people may like this. But my first gut response is, it just doesn't do it for me. But I... I Make it a point to when that happens to really, you know, say this is my emotive response to this. Go out, read it, get your own opinion on it, right. and you know, maybe you'll love it. But that's not my thing. All the other stuff, generally, when I say no, no go, <laughs> I'll go. Well, it's no go because this, 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 and this. Because I feel after reading some of reviews around around the web, some guys live behind that veil of they have no idea who I am. Well, I see these people. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, I want to know that if I saw them in person and they asked me, well, why did you, why would you say that about my work? I can go, well, one, read the column because I put it there. And two, because X, Y, and Z. And, you know, some people have taken very kindly to that and I've gotten some actually positive responses from, from from some really nasty reviews that I've written, and they're like, "Well, thank you for pointing that out. I really appreciate your your, your candor and whatever." And then other people, surprisingly, the ones that I'm not too brutal on, are the ones that get really really offended. <laughs> okay, that but, seems a little odd, but it's part of human nature, I guess. Yeah, but overall, overall, I, I I've, I've gotten really good good uh, feedback, and I've actually made some friends off of some of them, you know. Well, well that's so. cool. That's really cool. Yeah, well, that's pretty cool. We're going to go to just a little bitty break, and then when we come back, I'll ask you about where you're going in the future. Awesome. Here's a riddle for you. What do the California gold rush of the 1850s, secret societies, coded messages, mysterious 19th century flying machines, and an early 20th century outside artist named Charles A. A. Delshaw all have in common? The Secrets of Delshaw by Dennis Crenshaw and Pete Navarro. Go to www.secretsofdelshaw.com to learn more. We're coming back from break here now with Alex Roderick of the, hey. of the blog Working Title, but I know that... I, I mentioned earlier you have some other things in the works. You want to talk about that at all, or? Yeah, this, this year at uh, New York Comic Con, uh, Stefano Cardicelli, who's a longtime contributor to H uh, H&M Magazine, Heavy Metal Magazine, uh, we announced that coming out next summer, with under the Comics label, we have our first graphic novel together. Cool. Um, it's a 160-page trade called Bushido Wasabi. It's a, it's a pretty rad tale about a ronin who goes in search uh, for this girl. And when he finds her, things are a little slippery. And uh, things hit the fan, let's just put it that way. We'll keep it clean cause in case any kids watch it. Right. But uh, she ends up holding uh, a significant importance to the world. So Cool. It's, it's, it's a pretty exciting project. We're in, in the last stages of revisions to the, the final script right now, and, you know, Stefano and I are really, really excited about it. So, so check it out. It, check it out. Is this going uh, graphic novel, anime, both, or beyond, or any idea? Or Right now we're going to release it as a uh, collected graphic novel. Okay. It'll be a collected graphic novel, and it'll be available in summer of next year. Excellent. So I'll be looking forward to that. So we've got six, eight months to think about, save up our pennies for it, I guess. That's right. So anything else in the works? 
Um, Stefano and I, uh, Stefano actually has a, a story called Rider coming out in Heavy Metal Magazine next month, which I did the translations for. Uh, Stefano Cardicelli and Rita Gorgoni started this company named Azarek Studios, and they're an art house. And they're set up in Italy, and earlier this year I came on board to start helping them translate their stories. So this is the first uh, short that I actually translated with them, and it hits uh, heavy metal this December. So that's pretty cool. That comes out. I'll look for that one as well. Yeah. So, uh, so we have, I, I assume you'll continue with working title and be diligent about it and skewer everybody equally. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Except now, that, now I've got that anxiety knowing that my book's coming out. I'm just waiting for, for the me that's out there to go, yep. this book yep. sucks. <laughs> <laughs> so I can email him and go, screw you. <laughs> the, the karma, karma bites sometimes. Oh, yeah. I'm ready, I'm ready for it. I'm ready for it. I'm sure you are, and I'm sure that you put every ounce of talent you have into it, or at least you think you have, and right up until the deadline hits, and you have to put it in no matter how it stands. Oh, yeah. So before before I let you go, I do have one request. Show everybody your wristwatch. Uh, it's actually a, a Batman band. Oh, okay. <laughs> My uh, my wife thought it would be cute to throw me a uh, little kid's birthday party last year. Aha! Uh -huh. So we had Batman wristbands, uh, uh, Superman glitter stuff all over the place. It was it was actually a blast. <laughs> if you walked in, you would have thought it was for a six year old. <laughs> well. All of us fanboys are six years old, even when you had 50-odd years to it, like myself. Exactly. So that's one thing we never grow out of, and I hope oh, yeah. I never do. <laughs> well, Alex, I'll tell you what, I'll look forward to your novel, uh, and give us the name again. Bushido. It's called Bushido Wasabi. Bushido Wasabi. I know what Bushido is. I'll have to look up Wasabi. But... It's that uh, spicy green sauce that they give you when you order sushi. Uh, it's like okay. a green paste. That's why I don't know that so word. So it's like a spicy bushido. <laughs> okay, I can go with that. Yeah. Anyway, I'll look forward to that book. I'll look forward to the other stuff you're doing. And mostly I'll look forward to talking with you again down the line, probably when that comes out. And uh, we'll I'll get look it forward out. to it as well. We'll get it out to all the fans. Well, thank you, Alex. We'll Thank see you. you again.